look at the clock. But if you look at the clock in the back, it's, uh, to some people, it's time to quit. So now I can either quit and, and, and just have the closing or I can preach. Which one would you like? Preach. 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 Oh, God. <laughs> I, I hope so. Because uh, today's message that I have for you is, wow. has been heavy on my heart. I will serve you. This is a, a really fundamental, basic thing that the Christian is made of. And that's being a servant. And when I think about being a servant, you just, I've been telling people that I've been reading uh, a book called Biblical Eldership. And we have several copies in the back. And I think it'd be good for not just leaders or people that would like to be leaders, but I think it would be a book that would be good for everybody to read. And the reason why I say that is because for you who are not elders, it'd be good for you to know what an elder should be. I mean, the scripture is full of the qualifications of being an elder. Now, I am hired as the minister of Alliance Christian Church. But really, biblically speaking, this is not a proper title for the pastor of the church. And the other thing, too, is that every single Christian, every member of the body of Christ, are ministers. Yes. Amen. Because what is the... What does a minister mean? And that is to minister, which is to serve. And if we don't get that concept right, then we're going to have a false concept of what the person that's doing the preaching is supposed to be doing. So some people might say, well, the minister's job is to, you know, clean the church. Uh, do the, the, the landscaping, uh, remove the snow, and all that. That's the preacher's job, or the minister's job. And, and, and you're reading this book, and you just, <laughs> I come to realize that, you know what? One of the things that it brought up is, are you training people to take over? And uh, I have to say, I haven't been doing that. Because I'm such a perfectionist, and some of you will uh, say, yeah, I know. <laughs> it, it's, if people don't do it just right, you know, I might have somebody who's willing to do it, a certain thing, and, and if they don't do it just right, I will get in there and just kind of take it back from them. And I, if I've done that to you, I'm sorry. And I've come to you to realize, you know, I am going to die someday. It could happen today. And I talked about this Wednesday night, is we had a member of our church who, whose husband was doing a funeral service, and he walked out front, and he dropped dead of a heart attack. Now, I don't know how he trained his congregation to step in and fill in when he was gone. But what would happen if I did drop dead and die today? Would the congregation be able to just continue as it is and all the ministries that are we're involved in, would it continue? I hope so. And I know a lot of you are involved in a lot of the different ministries of Alliance Christian Church. But well, maybe there's a somebody here today that you just haven't figured out your calling. You, you just haven't figured out what is your position in the body of Christ. What is your job? What did God purpose you to do? To build up the body. Now some of you might be thinking, well, I didn't get any gifts. Everybody else has got, you know, we got... Uh, Virginia, who, who plays the piano beautifully in Yale. 
We got um, Reba who decorates all over. It's nice. How many of you recognize and appreciate the different decorations that Reba, along with the seasons? But you know, she also handles our finances. She's, she does a lot of things around. And you know what, Reba, I'm going to say that maybe it's time for you to start training somebody else to do take some of that responsibility away from you. I know you enjoy doing these things, but bring along somebody and say, hey, um, can you come and help me? Yeah, she also comes and pre prepares the communion every Sunday morning, unless she's going out of town and then she has, she asks somebody else. But maybe it's time for somebody else to step forward because I know Reba does a lot. Maybe there's somebody here that does not do anything for the congregation except you show up in church on Sundays. Maybe you can go over and say, Reba, I would like to help you out with this. Because each and every one of us should be involved in something to build up this body, to make this body function properly. And so I know it's going to be hard and I would like you to help me out is if some things don't get done, they're just not going to get done anymore. And I appreciate Glenn coming and cleaning the church. I, I should, he probably doesn't like me telling you that, but he, he comes and cleans the toilets, and mops the floors. And these are things that, there's a lot of things that people do that go on would go undone if they didn't secretly, quietly, in their own time, find something that needs to be done so that they can minister or serve this congregation. Jesus, it says they came to Capernaum when he was in the house and he asked them, what are you arguing about on the road? Now, do you think Jesus didn't know what he was asking or what the answer was to his question? Because a lot of times Jesus would ask questions and he already knows the answer, but he wants them to answer so that they can think about what they were complaining about. But they kept quiet because on the way they had argued about who was the greatest. How many of you ever been in a conversation where you wanted to look better than the other person? Anybody? Y you might say, well, you know, I can do that better than you. Well, maybe that's what I've been doing too, is I've been saying, well, your work is not good enough. I'm sorry, I apologize. But they were there arguing about who is the greatest in God's kingdom and and it says, sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first will be must be my last. And servant of all. Now you might think, well, Jesus is God, and so he's telling people, you must be a servant. But you know, how did he teach? We were talking about that this morning about training up your child in a way they should go. Well, what's the best way to train somebody? And that is to set the example. You do the thing that you're trying to teach, and when they see what it looks like to do what you're trying to teach them, then they will know how to do what you do. Pretty simple, right? But how many of us get that wrong? Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last, the very last and servant of all. Now remember at the Last Supper, right, what Jesus did? Because nobody else wanted to be a servant. Nobody else thought it was uh, their place to humble themselves and get on their hands and knees and wash each other's feet. But Jesus did. He got down his hands and knees and he washed each one of their feet. Now, you know what feet are like, right? 
I mean, when we wear socks over our feet, they probably didn't have socks, I don't know. But when you wear socks all day long, what happens at the end of the day? And this was evening time, right? It, you know, it, it kind of stinks, right? But, of course, you know, in those days, they didn't have uh, cars, so they walked dusty roads, and they probably had animals that were along the path, and you know, if you're walking and you accidentally step in something, <laughs> that's what their feet were like. But Jesus didn't complain. He didn't make excuses. He didn't say, well, I'm God. I shouldn't have to wash your feet. No. He got down his hands and knees, and he washed all their feet. But then what does he say? He says, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but you will understand. And you must do the same thing. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, you got to serve. And I have sent you the example so that you follow my example and serve each other. So, the question is, who are you serving? Now, a lot of people, they do things because why? Not because they want to honor God, but because they want to say, look what I do. Look at all the stuff that I've done. You know what? When you start doing that, guess what? You've already got the glory. That's why Jesus says, what is done is secret. God will reward you. No one can serve two masters, for you will hate the one and love the other. You will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. It's impossible. That's why he says you must love the Lord your God with what? Aww. With everything you got. He's got to be first place in your life. Because if you have something else, guess what? You're not serving God. That's right. You're serving yourself. Yes. You're doing what satisfies and takes care of your own selfish desires. Romans 12 says, I urge you, brothers and sisters, Adelphos, the Greek word Adelphos, like Philadelphia, Adelphos is saying brothers and sisters alike. In view of God's mercy, because of what God has done for you. Offer your bodies as what? Living sacrifices. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. A lot of people don't understand this. We were talking about that in Sunday school too, about how, you know, we... We think that, you know, by, by doing all the good things, you know, good works, we're going to get to heaven. Doesn't matter how many good works you do, that's not going to get you to heaven. That's right. He says, do not be conformed to the ways of this world. Now, conformity is something that we all do. We tend to do. We want to be just like everybody else. We want to keep up with each other. And we want to look good in front of anybody else. He says, don't do that. Don't conform. But he says, be changed. Be different. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and prove what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Again, Jesus says, but many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In 1 Peter 4.10, says, each one should use whatever gift he or she has received to serve one another and faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. 
reason why you're serving is you're showing God's grace flowing through you to the people that you're serving. I told you it's going to be short. You remember Joshua? He says, choose this day. Today, choose who you are going to serve. Are you going to serve the gods of the other countries or are you going to serve the mighty living God in all that you do? A while back, I had um, I drew an imaginary line in front of the in the front of the building, and I'm going to do the same thing too. Because sometimes we need something that will motivate us to make a decision to serve God and Him only. So if you can imagine Joshua drawing a line and it says, okay, choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, I am going to serve the Lord. Yes. So during this hymn of invitation today, I'm going to do that. I'm going to draw this line, imaginary line, and I'm going to say, choose this day who you will serve. And if you want to serve the Lord, I would like for you to come up to the front and say, I want to serve the Lord, as we sing.